Hi, and welcome to the District of Stitcher number three. Uh, and funnily enough, this is my third attempt to record. <sighs> Tech, isn't it great? Um, so yeah, this is a channel about cross stitch and not about technical difficulties or the bit of mascara I seem to have on my eyelid inexplicably. But you know what? You're not here for my eyelids. You're here for the stitches. So, uh, yeah, this is the channel of Odd Cross Stitch, and uh, if you are a returning visitor, then thank you so much. If you're new, also thank you so much for hitting play and uh, giving me a chance here. So, um, it's just been an absolutely lovely community on YouTube, so I'm really happy to be part of it. Um, you know, it's so rare to find <laughs> such a lovely community um, in, in who engage in the comments in such nice and helpful ways, and um, you know, it's... They always tell you never read the comments that originated on YouTube. Uh, also, newspaper articles never read those comments. Uh, but, you know, we are the cross-stitch community is definitely the exception to the rule, so I'm happy to be here. Uh, thank you so much to everybody on my last video who left comments um, for my recovery, and thank you for your patience as I was recovering from a uh, root canal. So, good time. Um, let's just jump right into it. Um, so I had hoped to have a finish for you, and I don't, um, but I do have some progress on um, the Waxing Moon Designs Monthly Trio. Um, she did, she released them in trios uh, in 2020, um, like January, February, March, April, May, June. Uh, so I will, my plan is to do all of them um, and incorporate them as part of my kind of decor on our condo door. Uh, this is January, so you can kind of, February's currently on the door, uh, so, but you can kind of get an idea. It's um, backed with some magnets that just, our condo door is metal, so it just like snaps right to the door and sits inside the seasonal wreath, so um, it looks cute. It was a fun thing to do, um, and I hadn't stitched with special, like, over-dyed threads before, so that was uh, a fun thing to do. So here is March. Wait something behind him here so he's he's cute little leprechaun um i am absolutely misstitched i miscounted this is low the shamrock is lower than it should be uh i'm just gonna mirror the shamrock on the other side i don't care enough to take it out and redo it uh it's just gonna miss it's gonna move up some little white swirl some backstitch detail that i'll either omit or move elsewhere on it um but I don't, I really don't want to pull out that shamrock. So uh, I guess I'm hoping to finish him up hopefully this evening or tomorrow since I have a work holiday. So, um, so yeah, that's March. And this is stitched on uh, picture, no, not picture this plus. Uh, I don't remember who, but it's vintage country mocha. Um, seems like everybody has some vintage country mocha. So odds are you probably know who it's from. Uh, it was the backup fabric for the Cottage Garden Samplings uh, Year in the Woods series, and I didn't want to stitch the fox on the browns, um, so I wasn't using the fabric that I that was shipped with it because I bought it sort of on a website that kitted it up for me. So um, I'm using it now for these, and I think it looks really nice because it the lighter thread really pops on the vintage country mocha. So. Um, that's that guy. I always feel like I should be taking this off the key snap for y'all, but uh, I'm not gonna. So here we are. <laughs> I love you. I don't love you that much. So uh, the next one, um, I will preface this with it turns out in my first video, I had said that I'm not a seasonal stitcher. I am a lying liar who lies. Uh, it turns out that I am a seasonal stitcher because I can't look at Christmas anymore. I just don't want to. So it's at least with some things, uh, I am probably going to cycle through a little bit seasonally. I had been working on my grandniece's Christmas stocking and I haven't touched it in the past two weeks. So I just took it off the stand, put it up. I had been determined to finish it, but I don't want to. So it's rather than have it take up space and just sit there untouched for months, like I normally do, I'm going to try something different and put on a project that I hopefully will actually stitch on. 
Um, and I haven't, but I just switched it out like two days ago, so giving myself time. Uh, this is the Dockside Quilt by um, Design Works, and I know several people commented that they also are working on it. Um, and so this is what the finished product will mostly look like. Um, this is a little more saturated than the thread is uh, in person, but um, it's still a really pretty pattern. It reminds me a lot of Maine, um, of the Belgrade Lakes region, and also just the shoreline because all the rockiness and stuff. It's very, very New England to me, and specifically very Maine. Um, so when I had put it up several years ago, I had originally bought the kit at Salty Yarns, which is a cross stitch store, a needlework store that also has like yarn and, and all sorts of stuff at it. Um, and it's on the boardwalk in Ocean City, Maryland, which is kind of neat. Uh, so that is one of my favorite places to stop when we're on vacation at the beach. So I um, had good progress on it previously. So let me bring the stand around here. Again, I got it on the stand and I'm not going to take it off the stand because that is a giant pain in the butt that I'm not going to do every two weeks. So here is the progress. Um, as you can see, I have the whole sky uh, pretty much done. The clouds are negative space uh, on the white Ada. Um, so I had just, I had started with the quilts here, moved into the buildings and then gone up and done the sky. And I just took that all the way across and then started in on the trees and stuff in the background up there. Um, so that'll be, I feel like that'll be a nice piece to keep working on as spring moves into, if I can refocus on my face, that might be nice. Hello. That's weird. I'm gonna pause it for a second while it refocuses. Okay, we're back and this time in focus. Uh, so, yeah, the dark side quilt will look, um, it'll be a nice one to stitch in as, you know, we move into later spring and through the summer, I think it's going to be really nice. And I'll probably, I'll probably end up taking it off sometime around fall, um, depending on the progress I make on it. So we'll see how that unfolds. Um, but it's a big one, so it'll be, you'll be seeing progress over the next many videos. So, uh, I do have a new start. Um, and I don't have much progress on it, but I really just, I was excited. It's been a busy few weeks for me, so not a ton of stitching time. Um, mostly work. Uh, I've just been tired from, um, from just work things. And, um, and also just, I was out of town last weekend and stuff. So, uh, but I did get a start on this one um, while we were watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> I was so hungover. Uh, not from the Super Bowl, but from the previous evening, uh, we were in Baltimore and my brother-in-law is in a band, uh, the Wide-Eyed Lounge Cats, if you happen to be in Baltimore, they're fantastic. Um, and they got together with a bunch of other musicians in Fells Point and they did um, a whole Beatles themed concert called All You Need Is Love. And it raised, it was at the Polish Home Club, um, which is on Broadway in Fells Point in Baltimore. Um, great venue. And it was just really, it, it's a very old school Fells Point. Uh, it's the old Polish neighborhood in Baltimore. And it's just, I love that neighborhood. Uh, it's where my sister lives. But um, the band is fantastic. All the musicians in Fells Point that play at all the, the bars and taverns and stuff there are always really good. Uh, and they all get together and they do these concerts there and, at the Polish Home Club. And it's always to raise money for local charities in Baltimore. Uh, and this one was support for first responders and things. So it was really it was really nice, um, and uh, it was Beatles themed, which I'm, we both love the Beatles, and then they, uh, the Polish Home Club served very large bottles of Polish beer, and I had several of them, and it's, I'm too old for that, so <laughs> Sunday I was kind of in rough shape, so I just got kind of draped over the couch while we were watching the Super Bowl, uh, and so I didn't get a ton of stitching done, but I was really excited to see they, um, the colors on the blue fabric. And this is the cottage garden samplings, gear in the woods. And this is number one, this is the fox. And he's just so handsome. So this is, it's a picture of this plus linen. I do not remember the color name, but I just remember I went through until I found the blue that I wanted. Um, Cause one, two, three stitch lets you go through by color. 
which is what I did. Uh, I have a fairly true monitor. Um, so this is the blue I wanted. And that russet just really pops off it as a fellow russet haired person I knew it would look nice. So that was really nice to, to work on. Um, I made the needle minder. It was an old, it was a pin that I, it was like part of an order that I had on Etsy and it just made me laugh. So <laughs> little stabby ghost look behind you. Uh, so I made it into a needle minder. Um, so that's that. I, when I finish up the March, I'm going to do, I'm going to start the Leslie tear blue tit pattern. I'm 12. Sorry. Um, the, I'll, I'll hold up a couple of the threads just so you see how nice it looks. Um, this is going to be on a 28 count, um, by picture this plus 28 count, uh, confetti opalescent, um, fabric. And so this is, you can see that you can kind of see the shimmery. Um, but it's a really pretty butter yellow, has these stronger patches of yellow and these splotches of blue that end up looking very teal. Uh, so I think it'll be really nice for a spring pattern. Um, and I just didn't want to do it on white Ada. Uh, so this is like the colors on it. So I think that's just going to look really nice. It's got a bunch of daffodils. I'll stick a picture up here. Uh, it's got a bunch of daffodils and, um, I did put a picture in my first video, but I'll put another picture up of what that will look like. So that will go on the Q snap that I free up when I finish up the March um, Shamrock guy. And the next one, it's going to be a little while, but the next pattern that I want to do when I free up, I'm not a big mermaid person, but I just loved this pattern. It's by Mirabilia, um, and it's called Mermaid of Atlantis. But I just like how you know, she looks kind of, there's kind of a Grecian element to her. And I just, I also loved that it was these jewel tones stitched on this green. And usually with mermaids, you see it on blue fabric. Um, and I just, I, it's, I never really seen anything stitched on this color, this sort of dark, um, not quite hunter. It's a little grayer. It's more like an army green. Um, and it is the linen that came I got off one, two, three stitch where I do a lot of my orders and it was, uh, um, it's called, it's a 32 count Laurel is the name of it. Um, I don't know who the maker is, but you know, it's just, it's so rare. I see anything that's on that, there we go, on that color fabric. And I'm, so I'm really excited to start it. I think it'll be really special. Um, now, I had promised the folks who, <laughs> who stayed with me on, uh, last, on the, the second video, um, when I was recovering from my root canal that I would do a quick, um, kit parade. So I don't have a ton of kits, um, but the ones I have, I think are really fun. So I will just show you those real quick. This is a uh, kit by Riolis, um, and Riolis is a believe that they are Lithuanian, um, a Lithuanian company. Um, so you'll see that it's, it's in English, but it's also, um, I don't know if it's in Lithuanian or if it's in Russian, um, but it's in the Cyrillic alphabet. But anyway, this is, I like the threads. It's this almost like wool, um, thread. And so this is window with apples. And I just, I loved the sort of ornate, like, um, Slavic architecture, uh, around the window shutters. Um, and then also just with this, you know, the, the wool thread that comes with it, I think it's just going to look really like soft and pretty. So, um, it's my first kit by them. If you've done, if you've done one of their kits, drop a line in the comments and let me know. Um, but I just, I just love the colors and I thought it would be really nice to do. Um, this next one is a dimensions kit that I probably, I do not think I'm going to start with what remains of this winter. I mean, in DC, it's like, it was like 70, it got up to 70 ish degrees today. Like the cherry, it's going to be a very early cherry blossom season. 
like the indicator tree already has buds. Um, and then there's, you know, like the daffodils are popping out of the ground. So it's just, it's going to be a very early spring. So I don't think I'm going to get to this one, but I do look forward to when I do, because I, you know, in the mid Atlantic here, we don't get, we don't get a ton of snow, even on a normal winter, we'll get a little bit of snow. Like there's usually a couple of snow days, although this past winter was nothing. Um, I think there was like flurries one night and I was really excited to see the flurries and then there was no snow. So, but we'll get a lot of the wintry mix so you can get that ice storm. Um, and then where I grew up in Pennsylvania, it got a lot of, even though it was southwestern Pennsylvania, it got a lot of the lake effect stuff off Lake Erie, um, you know, would sweep down the state towards us. Uh, and so that, you know, I just like sort of winter and I was, it's so pretty, it's so dangerous to drive in, <laughs> bad for power lines, but it's so pretty when all the branches and things are coated in ice. So this is a, uh, ice cardinal is the name of the kit. And I thought that the art just really captured that feeling um, and the way the branches look with the ice. So, um, and I saw a Ukrainian stitcher um, start this. And actually, I'm sorry, I did not show, I did not leave space. I'll leave space here. So I'll just put up my hands when I'm editing. I know to like put the picture here. Uh, there is a pattern by, um, it's Cross Stitch by Maria, I think. Maria Bravko is her name. Um, Cute Patterns by Maria. That's what it's called. She has an Etsy shop. She is a Ukrainian uh, cross stitch designer, and she has this really pretty pattern that's like, I think it's called Peaceful Skies. Or something like that that's like a big crane big albatross in the sky and like a, a little ukrainian house and it's just a really pretty pattern and um that it's got that sort of you know the ukrainian flag has the blue and the yellow and the yellow for the the wheat fields and the um blue sky and so it has that sort of big blue sky on it and um i saw somebody else i saw on her instagram somebody in ukraine had stitched it and then backed it on fabric that was blue and then yellow and it's like hanging in her kitchen uh in i think kiev and i thought that was pretty and i as we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the full-scale russian invasion of ukraine i thought that it would be nice to sort of start that so you'll see it on the next video um hopefully uh and i i don't have fabric and thread for it yet i haven't i haven't picked that up yet I have some fabric that I think I'm going to use for it, just some, uh, because it's sort of, it's not full coverage, but it's not like one of the big full coverage kits, but it's like, it's all stitched. So I think I'm just going to have some, um, just neutral linen that I'm going to use for it. Um, but I haven't picked up threads because I think I have a lot of them. So I'd have to go through my thread stash and like old threads and stuff from other projects and stuff and pull it out and see. Um, but it, it's a really pretty one. So um, you know, I'll, I'll pull it up and to sort of mark the anniversary, um, of the full scale invasion and, and how all of our thoughts and such are with, um, with the Ukrainian citizens. So, um, back to the, the kits, the, <laughs> the other one I will not start this winter is this guy. Um, but I love him. I am, I am a sucker for it's my basic white girlness. I'm a sucker for anything that has mason jars. <laughs> Uh, so it's, um, but it's a pretty little Christmas stitch. And I think like once I get in the Christmas mood, I'll work on this and, uh, my grandniece's stocking again, probably sometime in like November-ish or October once I'm done with Halloween stitches. So this other one <laughs> I plan on starting in June, uh, which is Pride Month. Um, and this is just because it has a rainbow on it. <laughs> Good morning. It is, uh, I can't even do justice to how bright these threads are. Like, it's insane. Um, but I just saw it on sale, and it just made me laugh because it was so sunshiny and so morningy. Uh, and it's got that, that rainbow on good morning, and it was um, the most pleasantly gay thing I'd seen. So <laughs> it's, I think I'm probably going to start it in June uh, as my Pride Month stitch. Uh, the um, last one I have, I bought to make for my sister. When I lived with her in Baltimore, we had a basset hound. So 
He is just, he's so cute. And um, we had, you know, he, our Basset Hound, uh, he lives many years. He was very old for Basset Hound, but you know, he did, he did cross the Rainbow Bridge in, uh, I think 2019. Um, my sister had thought about getting another Basset. I don't know that she will, but this is a Luca S. Luca dash S. I don't know if that's Luca S or Lucas. Luca. But anyway, this is uh, Lucas. Uh, this is the Basset Hound, and I just love his little ears. Uh, we used to tie Blue's ears in a bow on his head, and he wouldn't do anything because he was a Basset Hound, so he didn't care. Uh, so <laughs> Bassets are great, man. Um. That is it for this session. It is actually a little shorter than I thought it would be. Um, that's all the stitching. I thought it would be fun to move into talking about some of the books that I've been reading. Um, I know a couple of people have, have asked stuff in comments and we've talked about it. So I do a little book segment at the end. Um, there's a couple that I will flag for you uh, and I'll put in little screenshots of covers here. Um, the first is, uh, hold on, now I have to pull up my, <laughs> to pull up my Goodreads app so I can tell you the author's names. Um, the first I was going to recommend is The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy, and that was just, it was such an interesting little independent sort of dark-ish themed fantasy, like it was one part... It was, it's by Megan Bannon, B-A-N-N-E-N. -N -E and again, it's The Undertaking of Heart, H-A-R-T. I'll have a cover, I'll have a picture of the, the cover in here. And it, um, <laughs> was one part like Western, one part, not zombie horror, it wasn't really zombie horror. Like there was an element of that to it. Like the one character is an undertaker and has to put down Restless Dead. Um, but it was also a romance. Um, and it got a little spicy, uh, which I clearly do not mind. Um, but it was just, it was really fun and I really liked the characters. I thought it was a very creative world building. I thought it was very, it was a very good self-contained, uh, story. Uh, so that was nice because oftentimes when you delve into fantasy, anything fantasy themed, it's always part of a series. And I love series, but sometimes I just want to read a book and just be done with it and I don't have to wait for the next installment. Um, the other one that I will recommend here is uh, it's called Half a Soul and it is by Olivia Atwater, A-T-W-A-T-E-R. And Half a Soul is a um, Regency fairy tale. And it is, uh, if you have ever read Dr. Um, Sorry, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, uh, which is my favorite book of all time. I have a whole tattoo themed from Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. But if you've ever read that, it's like a lighter version of that. Um, if you have not, don't worry about it. I'll talk about that book another time. Uh, but Half a Soul is, um, you know, it is one part Regency romance, one part social justice tale, one part romance. Uh, and it just... Um, and, and a lot of like fairy tale fantasy overlaid and in fairy in the sense of like fairies are bad and mischievous don't make deals with the fae sort of way and I feel like oftentimes like fantasy now is that has the fae and it tends to veer towards the sort of Sarah J Moss um, end of you know hot fairy boyfriends which I'm here for to be clear I love Sarah J Moss. But this is more, I also like to read the fairy tales where it's like, oh, right, no, the, you can't trust the fae. Because it's a little truer to, like, the folkloric aspect of, of fairy tales and things out of Ireland. Um, so, yeah, Half a Soul was just, it was very sweet. Um, very nice. Um, I also read The Kiss Curse by Aaron Sterling. And I had meant to read it at in October. It is the sequel to The X-Hex, and I'll put both covers up here. Um, the X-Hex I read when it came out, and it, it was just the, their romances, they're like lightly paranormal themed in the sense that like they're witches in this 
small town in Georgia that's very like has a very Halloween vibe uh, to it, and it's um, but it was essentially just a pumpkin spice latte of a book <laughs> with a really kind of like a sweet and steamy romance to it, which also got a little spicy. Again, I don't mind that. Uh, so it, in fact, I usually seek out the spicy books, but um, <laughs> it is just, I, so I highly recommend those uh, if you, and I think they're worth, they're worth reading now, but they're also worth if you were in the mood for like a really cozy Halloween read. Um, those are really nice. So, um, I will leave you with that and I will wrap things up for this episode. And thanks so much for subscribing. Thanks for liking. Thanks for being here. I really highly appreciate you all. So until next time, happy stitching.